Good afternoon! Hello and welcome to the Omni Coalition News Show, a.k.a. Talkness. And I need to start the event, this one. Yes, start what? the event. I've been forgetting about the events on Discord, actually, because I'm, I'm an idiot. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, this God. show is the amalgam of strange, weird, bizarre, off-the-wall, and otherwise things you don't normally see for, uh, blah, anymore from most news sources these days. During a time of political overabundance, overabundance and divisiveness, we present you with more unifying topics to discuss. For links to the articles, the music, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am you, Xander, and today I am joined by... The lovely who that is Hello And our resident Our resident uh, uh, Most recent Neo Amish converter Jebediah Abraham Yeah <laughs> <laughs> With with a little With a little hint of America Yeah And a, and a ham sandwich a, a, what? a ham sandwich, delicious Anyway, today is oh, Freya's Day A.K.A. Friday uh, April 14th, 2023. Let's jump into the news today, shall we? Starting us off in, uh, uh starting us off from Audi Central, we have parents gift five-year-old daughter a luxury SUV to motivate her to go to school. Why? Malaysian social media has been abuzz with the story of a young, well-off couple who recently bought a Mercedes SUV as a present for their five-year-old daughter to motivate her to go to school. What? She doesn't even understand the concept of a vehicle. Uh, earlier this month, Malaysian businesswoman Farana uh, Zahara posted a TikTok video asking her daughter Fatima what she wanted as a birthday present, to which the little girl uh, answered that she wanted either a green Mercedes G-Wagon or a BMW. How the hell does she even know about this? In the same video, Farhara made the girl promise that she will go to school if she gets what she wants, and then they seal a deal with a pinky shake. Apparently, Farana and her husband have been having problems convincing Fatima go to go to school because she hadn't turned five yet, and they use this opportunity to persuade her, uh, just like our parents used to back in the day. No, uh, they didn't buy us cars. Wow. What the hell? Mm -hmm. That is absolutely astounding, like, in a bad way. Yeah. Like No, well, you know, I remember, like, there was a guy from India who sued his parents for letting him be born. I remember that, yeah. I spoke about that the other day in a Discord server. I used to, yeah, he sued his parents because he didn't uh, have consent to getting born. It actually, yeah, it actually happened. Give him some consent. <laughs> yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, this is a mm, funny thing. It's like, you know point. what? Dude, there is a loophole for this. They, if, if the parents are well off, they could actually just give her, like, you know, like, you remember the Barbie cars that, like, you know, the little tiny toy cars. Oh, the power wheel around? things? Yeah. Just, they yeah, power that. Wheel yeah, that would have been way better. They could. They could just like they could just get one custom made to look like those and be like here you go. Yeah, she doesn't know the difference, dude. She's five. How does she even know what a BMW <laughs> is? How does she know of she Mercedes? Knows, that's impressive. When dude, I was five, I was eating dirt. Well, you know, like come on. Dude, if she knows when I was a five, I was like that, and she's gonna be a... and using them as guns. <laughs> yeah. Dude, she's gonna yeah, be the future guns. mechanic if she knows like BMWs like oh, that. Yeah. Like, she's gonna be like mechanic. an epic mechanic if she's only not even five. And know yeah, these type of car models. Nut. Maybe. Anyway, she might, yeah, she's going to be a car nut. Let's move on up here. More from Audi Central. 45-year-old man finds online success by posing as a teenage girl. That's creepy. Oh, well, well that's creepy and uh, <laughs> awkward. Yeah, Nanami Kana... That's not funny, uh, uh, Nanami Kappa, uh, Kana Look looks like a Japanese teenage girl in most of the photos he puts on Twitter, but he re he recently shocked his fans with photos of himself from 12 years ago in which he appeared as a bearded, overweight man. A Japanese influencer oh, with Jesus. around 35,000 Twitter followers, Nanami Kana is actually just the online persona of a 45-year-old father of one who simply enjoys putting on women's clothes and posing as a teenage girl. We need to bring the asylums back. He does a remarkably good job of it, too, as most of the people who visit his Twitter page for the first time declare their disbelief at the fact that he is a man and a 45-year-old one at that. But Nanami really blows uh, his fans' minds last year when he first posted photos of himself 12 years ago, revealing that he was over 60 kilograms or 132 pounds heavier than today. So, oh, geez. so he transformed his body. He lost a lot of weight. That's cool and all. I wonder how many people, like... You know, after figuring out that, you know, they, yeah, 
to, uh, to that picture. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, trap. like well, it's also, a trap. Like, it is a trap. For, like if this guy's trap. a fucking uh, father, like imagine yeah, what the girl's feeling like there. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Like that one character. Like, this is my one character from fucking Helsing Ultimate. <laughs> Actually, like you think Recently. it's a, you think it's a chick, but it's actually a dude. <laughs> My God. So. Wow. So Sick he thing. actually got people to think that uh, that's actually him pretending to be a girl. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. There's wow. a there was a meme that used to go around regarding traps. There was a character in Helsing Ultimate that was. I'm pretty sure this was actually in the main story. They showed in in a bridge, but the one character was a male disguised as a female. Hmm. There was a bunch of memes based around it because the person, well, let's not the get too deep like, into this. I don't yeah. want to give a reason to cancel us. So um, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's well, a, also remember, I, I just like, think it's meme. No, well, yeah. think this one's actually cool because it's actually in the movie Hook with Robin Williams. I just told you about this. Oh and yeah, that's many people know. Glenn Close actually portrayed a man to uh, she's a, she has a cameo in the movie Hook with Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman. She's the person that gets put in the boo box. Not the boo box. No, no, that's Glenn Close. It's a female pretending to be a guy. Yeah, right like here. That's Glenn right Close. Next to Robin Williams because they said uh, you know there was a betrayer. Know that. And someone doesn't belong wow. there. But no, it's actually a really funny video. Like, it's a little known fact, but yeah, interesting yeah, stuff there. Uh, here, let me. Know. Can I read this one off here, bud? Go for it. Yes, a man wins 365 days of paid leave in exceptional company raffle. That's one entire year. Ooh, yes. yeah, I would totally take that up. Does that include? Uh, yeah. Well, no, I have, have to include the weekends, obviously. But do you want to continue? No, 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 uh, you can read. I just wanted to read the headline. Yeah, why don't you uh yeah, why don't you guys uh switch off reading the headlines and I'll read the body. Sounds good? Sounds good to me. Uh, all right. Great idea. A That's Chinese a idea. man has attracted the envy of his entire country after reportedly winning 365 days of paid leave in a generous raffle organized by his company. That that is actually surprising in China of all places. Wow. In a viral video that has been circulating on Chinese social media for about a week, a young man can be seen sitting on a chair in what looks like a banquet hall and holding a large sign that says 365 days of, pay of paid leave. It wasn't long before the footage drew the attention of mainstream news outlets who managed to identify the location shown in the video, and thus the event took place there. It turns out that this was a record. Uh, or this was recorded during the annual meeting held by a company in Xinjiang whose management wanted to ease the tension of its employees by offering fun and enticing prizes in a raffle. Well, that's better than you know yeah. getting whipped in the in the you know sweatshops and everything. So, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yep. Cheese and rice. And of course, refer to reading uh, audience. Uh, you know, please refer to the underbar in the description below. The links to all of these articles, the ones we've read, and this one, and the ones we will get to, they're all down there. Uh, so yeah, they put in all the work to bring us all this news. I just read it to you. So you know, go give them the foot traffic, please. Anyway, but also just look this up for yourself too. You know, uh, do the research on your own as well. And don't take our word for it. Yeah, but... exactly. Exactly. Yes. Absolutely, I agree. We're just reading what we see, but also you can also verify if we if what we're saying is right or wrong. And if not, like please comment below as well. Yes, if something we said is an inaccurate document or something. We want to know. Yep. So I can't anyways, help it. I'm staring at my glasses and my picture down there. I'm fascinated with uh, my glasses. Your new, your new eyeglasses steaming up on you there, buddy. You're, you're just staring. At your no, 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 no. I just, I'm I just love my, my new glasses. Like, <laughs> I know. You, you, like I said, you look like Michael Douglas and falling down. Okay, defense. <laughs> All right, who wants to read this one? All right, Next go for one. it. Doom, <laughs> doom, 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 sir. Damn. That the most high school. I did, I did that in the most elementary school. Stop, <laughs> dude. <laughs> God damn. Japanese right. cafe fires waitress for mixing her own blood in cocktails. Eh. What? Ew. Oh, the irony of that. <laughs> A young Japanese waitress has been accused of borderline terrorism by her employers after it was discovered that she mixed her own blood into a patron's cocktail. 
the Mondaji Con Cafe Daku, uh, Problem Child Dark Cafe, that's a weird name, in Sapporo, Japan, opened its doors for the first time on March 3rd. It hoped to attract patrons willing to pay 2,500 yen, or $25, an hour to drink all they wanted by hiring mentally unstable and problematic girls dressed in dark, goth-style attires as waitresses. This is yeah, a recipe for disaster. Nothing wrong going on there. That's, uh, you know, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, mentally now, I, now I'm understanding people. why what happened happened. Uh, the idea backfired when one of the waitresses took her role a little too far by adding her blood into a cocktail, reportedly at the request of a customer. The cafe fired the young uh, woman as soon as its management learned about the incident and apologized to its clientele, describing the dangerous actions of the former employee as borderline terrorism. Uh, well, it sounds like your restaurant is borderline terrorism, my guy, you know? So, well, dude, you, well, you want to hire a whole bunch of mentally ill people to run your store. What do you think was going to happen? <laughs> That's what one would call a Bloody Mary. Oh, God. No, don't. Don't turn me off. I love Bloody Mary. Those are great drinks. That is an AO approved pun right there. <laughs> Good Lord. That's a quote right there in itself, dude. That's going to kill like Wow. For like the past, wow. like the past minute, I was thinking of that. I was like, oh. I got to time this perfectly. <laughs> yes. Good Lord. Good Lord, Doom. All right. Oh, we got some more stuff from Japan here. They're getting robot, Alice. Alice, Alice. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you broadcasting from Cybertron? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Well, that explains things. And uh, what's going on from news from Cybertron is that how we. Popular anime caused Japan's raccoon infestation. Oh, Japan's on Cutting Cybertron now Cybertron. too. Oh God, they're everywhere. Um, raccoons? Raccoons? <laughs> yep. Everywhere. Raccoons are not native to Japan, yet in the last few decades, the, fury, uh, the furry critters have become naturalized in 44 of the country's 47 prefectures, causing all sorts of problems for humans and other animal species. And I think it all started with the Cute Animal series. In 1963, U.S. Uh, writer Sterling North launched his most popular, uh, popular book, Rascal, a memoir of a better, better era. It told the story of a young boy called Sterling who went on adventures with his raccoon sidekick Rascal, and it became such a huge hit that Disney decided to turn it into a live-action movie. In Japan, Rascal's adventures inspired a 52-episode anime series called Rascal the Raccoon, uh, a.k.a. Ariguma Raskaraku, uh, which ran for a year in 1977 and made <laughs> raccoons sorry. the most sought-after pets in the country. There was just one problem. There were no raccoons in Japan, so people started importing, importing them from the U.S. at a rate of about 1,500 raccoons per month. And that's an invasive oh species, so, so that's not good. Wow. So they did to themselves, not yeah. realizing hey, that they're a rodent. Those things may look cute, and, but and they are good like, eating. Yeah. Raccoon? <laughs> I've never had good appetizer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. We're going to have appetizer. some for appetizers today. We're going to have some raccoon tails and raccoon claws. Well, they taste like they taste like black bear. Well, no, actually, here's the fun thing. It's like depending you know, on your you could, like totally. What? Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, depending on your definition of tail, that might make you a furry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Come on, now. <laughs> you know, I was gonna say, you know, you know how people are like, like all all the people in Florida right now with their little like ankle biter dogs, worrying about like alligators eating them. If you oh, have a problem with that, you know, why don't you catch an alligator them. and fillet it, dude? Alligator yeah. meat is really freaking good. Actually, it's kind I'm of ironic that we're talking animal. about food and such now because here we go. Check this out. I haven't even eat I haven't even eaten yet. Okay. Oh, can I take this Frozen. one here since it's freaking food? Oh, no, you go ahead, do. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll go. This frozen fish salad was voted the worst dish in the world. All right. I called BS pineapple on pizza. Hey! 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. No, 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 no. I, I, I've tasted Dude, much. I, I have a freaking. I have like one. It's it's a, not a bumblebee, but it's uh, what do you call them? They're 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 the ones that like burrow into wood. Those big bumblebee things. Oh, the things. black ones. The big black ones. Well, they have a carpenter like, bees. Do you have a stripe of yellow carpenter on them? bees. But no, no. Is one keeps like going around my head. Oh. And buzzing like he's gonna try to bore into my brain. Yeah. Good luck on that. Well, but 
Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's a bad joke. Anyway, it says here indigrica salad or indig indigric indigrica salad. That's a weird word to pronounce. Uh, a Russian fish salad that originated in Yakutia, the coldest inhabited region in the world, was recently voted the worst dish in the world by the readers of online food guide Taste Atlas. Indigrica is a rather simple dish. It consists of diced, uh, diced whitefish such as broad whitefish, elma, and muskun combined with onions and seasoned with oil, salt, and pepper. That doesn't sound so bad, right? Well, at least not so bad as other dishes uh, we featured on Oddity Central in the past. Uh, the problem with indigrica uh, salad is that the fish is not only raw, but frozen solid, which is to expe be expected from a dish born in a region where temperatures routinely drop below 70 degrees Celsius. Negative 70 degrees wow. Celsius. Um, the dish is usually served as an appetizer accompanied by lemon wedges and a shot of vodka. Well... Well, yeah, that's why like you don't have to taste it the terribleness. Frozen solid out, raw first. fish with onions. And, oh, that sounds absolutely disgusting. I bet you I know exactly what that vodka's for. Yeah, to, to stomach yeah, that. To numb your to, to not, numb not your, just to your it? No, it's your to, numb, to numb your taste buds before you eat it. I mean, look at so that. That know, looks absolutely appalling. Before it gets busted wide open. Hmm? Dude, I wouldn't even oh, feed that to a stray uh, cat. Like... I mean, at least cook it. If they cook I it, I would eat it, but try it. frozen, no. It's huh? raw. You know, I only like raw fish, like, on sushi. Yeah. Like, with a rice. Like, I don't know. Something yeah. with rice and raw fish, it's just, like, a good combination. And the seaweed wrap. But then again, like, I've had the other form, like, sashimi and stuff like that, where, yeah. you know. Fruits. I can't eat seagrass. Or, well, seaweed. Seagrass, seaweed. Yeah, same thing. You don't, you don't um, eat seaweed, you smoke it. <laughs> he said weed. My thoughts exactly. <laughs> anyway, let's move on up here. Speaking of bees, well, we Alice. have the bees. Yeah, we have the bees of Not Easter the... Island produce the purest honey on earth. Not the bees. Oh, you, <laughs> you had me at the purest honey. <laughs> so is that where is that where uh, the Wicker Man like took place? Was on Easter <laughs> Island then? I don't think so. Um, Not says, the bees. That would be, that'd be Winnie the Pooh's favorite location. Oh God. Dude, uh, you and, well, have you seen the yeah. have you seen the new movie uh, Blood and Honey, Winnie the Pooh? Like, oh my god, <laughs> brutal! Yes, <laughs> I love it. Oh, dude, we, we did love a it. movie night with that. That was uh, shouldn't have messed was, with Winnie. It's horribly, but awesome. So bad, it's so good. You yeah. know, like I fear for everything eventually gonna uh, slip into public domain, like. <laughs> What's gonna happen to oh, Mickey Mouse? <laughs> oh, they already have a horror game based around that. I'm not surprised. But anyway, it says here, isolated on an island in the middle of the southeastern Pacific Ocean, the bees of Easter Island are free of all the pathogens and pesticides ravaging the global bee population and therefore produce the purest honey on the planet. The beekeepers of Chile's Easter Island are fully aware that their bees may one day become the salvation of the world's most important pollinator, with bee colonies all over the world struggling to survive serious threats like pesticide poisoning, new diseases, and climate change. Uh, the bees of Easter Island are probably the only ones in the world yet to be affected by such problems, and their owners hope to keep it that way. They have managed to convince the local government to ban the importation of bees because of the significant risk of contamination. Now, there's some there's some political propaganda in there. You know, I, I find it funny that they could say climate change, yet it's not affecting certain areas. Uh, no, if it's climate change, everything's affected. You know, it's not like something's outside of the climate to not be affected by the change. So you can't have oh, climate change and not at the same the time, you know? So I, was, I remember the bee that was, like, hovering around me. It's called a carpenter. They're the ones that... Uh, a, a, a carpenter bee. Like, uh, yeah, that's what I said earlier. I asked you if it was a carpenter bee, like the big black ones. And those things, oh, those no, ones I, scare I me. Hear, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're no, actually, they're actually uh, harmless. They're, harmless. Most, they're mostly harmless. They're everywhere around my uh, apartment. Just... So I don't but, care yeah. if they're harmless. Look at yeah. the size of that thing. Keep it away. No. That's a chonky boy. That's big. That is a very chonky boy. Yeah. Oh no. Well, no. Like I, I, I'd rather have him around me than a hornet. I don't want yeah, either. Hornets just have a temper. Or a, uh, a yellow jacket. Oh. Uh, hey, buddy. How you doing? Oh, here's an even scarier fact about hornets. They have photo. They have photographic memory. They see your face once, and they will never forget you. That's terrifying. Yeah. All right. Well, here's one yeah, perfect for you. 
Ooh. Spanish athlete emerges from cave after 500 days underground. Wow. Taking notes from Heath Ledger? Heath Ledger? <laughs> Put in a cave? <laughs> a Spanish extreme athlete emerged from a cave in Granada after spending 500 solitary days 230 feet underground. Beatrice Flamini, uh, at the age of 50, entered the cave on November 21st, 2021, with an aim to learn about the effects of solitude and deprivation on the human body and mind. Flamini, who was monitored from afar by a team of scientists from the universities of Almeria, Granada, and Murica, not America, but Murica, uh, oh, Mur Mercia, actually, Mercia, uh, <laughs> Shut up. Said she lost count of the days after about two months and thought only uh, 160 to 170 days have elapsed when she reached the project's goal of 500 days. Wow. Wow. So she was like way out of out of, out of tune. You know, that's, that's dangerous. She took so, the Batman training way too seriously. Yeah. So apparently she had read 60 books while she was down there, though. So, you know, that's cool. So I don't think you can get a good TV signal down there. Oh. Got smarter. In 500 days, got smarter by reading books. Yeah. Big brain. Yep. We got another one here. A student ID from stolen purse returned a woman after 41 years. Huh. Nice. Hmm. A student ID found in a buried purse in a British Columbia man's yard was returned to its owner 41 years after the bag was apparently stolen. The Naniamo RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, so this is Canada, uh, said a man was digging a hole for a fence post in his Naniamo yard recently when he found an old purse that was deteriorating from apparent years underground. The man opened the purse and found a well-preserved 1981-1982 student ID from Wellington uh, Junior Secondary School, which is now Wellington High School. So, hmm. all right. The resident uh, turned his discovery over to the police, who were able to identify the owner of the ID, identified only as Lori. So, that's cool. Got her ID back. Canada. Well, this <laughs> one's interesting. <laughs> you want to read this Man one? Man throws $200,000 on Oregon Highway to bless others. What? That's stupid. Yeah, that is stupid. That is very <laughs> stupid. You have two hundred grand. Do not throw it on the highway. Buy a house. <laughs> yeah. Buy a, buy a house with that, or dude, a brand new car. <laughs> dude, seriously, like of all the ways to spend two hundred thousand dollars on drugs, utilizing other people to do that. There you go, Oregon. Come on. And of course, and here's the other thing: endangerment. Like vehicles stopped on a busy Oregon uh, 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 driver, so their drivers could get out and collect an estimated two hundred thousand dollars thrown out of another driver's window. So he threw it out of his window, and then he caused traffic to stop. That is public endangerment. This guy should get the electric chair. Seriously, I should I should just I, I would just block off that entire road until I got all two hundred thousand. <laughs> For myself, because I'm greedy <coughs> like that, <laughs> and I need the money. <laughs> well, at least you're living up to your hat. To uh, the Oregon State. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see what you did there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> The Oregon State Police said Colin Davis McCarthy, at the age of 38, threw the cash out of his window on Interstate 5 uh, near mile marker 192 in Eugene. McCarthy, who was not charged with any crime, told officers he was, quote, doing well and wanted to bless others with gifts of money, end quote, the OSP said in a statement to KVAL TV. So he didn't, he didn't get charged with anything, not even a slap on the wrist. Dude, this guy, you know, he should be Ooh. locked up because that is like public endangerment, you know, and Littering. like potential tax evasion, you know, like, like two hundred thousand dollars you're just gonna just throw out. Like I'm pretty sure the IRS wants some of that. So, like, hell, I, I'm not even a lawyer or anything, but I can think of like several things, you know, beyond my ten digits to 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 bring this guy into a jail. So, yeah. Anyway, let's move on up here. Oh, here's another perfect one for you. <laughs> Australian man completes 3,182 push-ups in an hour. Damn. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. Bro, if I could meet this man, I'm going to give him a pat on the back. Holy hell. <laughs> yeah. And 
Australian bodybuilder broke a Guinness World Record when he completed a staggering 3,182 push-ups in just one hour. Lucas Helmke, at the age of 33 of Brisbane, completed an average of over 53 push-ups per minute to break the record of most push-ups in one hour. Uh, Helmsky bested the previous record of 3,182 set by fellow Australian Daniel Saikai in April of last year, 2022. All right. This man deserves a round of applause. That is actually impressive. Yep. I don't even know if the super chef can do that. And he does 2,222 push-ups every day. Well, does it take him about an hour? Like... Oh, I, I have no idea. It, I, I, apparently, he does them all in one shot. Like, huh. apparently, he, he took Who? years to prep for it, though. You know that you know that jacked um that sh- that former military soldier from, I think he was in the army. The gift that he, he that you post the all the time, the guy chef, with the, sh- the knives. The Russ chef. Yeah. Yeah, it's the chef Russ meme. Yeah. But with but with his actual face, you take away Russ's face, and it's some. It's actually a, that's an actual person. Like he's a real guy. Yep. Here's something interesting. Oh, okay, cool. You back, Alice? Maybe. Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, you want to take this one? Uh, give me one second. Let him just read this one. I'll read the next one. All right. Alrighty. Uh, Maine Museum offers twenty-five thousand dollar reward for the recovery of a crashed meteorite. Huh. Oh, we damn. Have, um, Give we me have a, a general location and I'll be there. Yeah, we have a couple articles here that are repeated yeah, and a couple go. other uh, from a couple other sources. So like you know, uh, uh, we'll we'll be getting mm-hmm. back to this like you know in a in a snippet. It says here though, uh, Maine Museum is offering a twenty five thousand dollar reward for the retrieval of a meteorite fr- of, or of meteorite fragments that made landfall near the Canadian border. So is it twenty five thousand for a fragment? You know, like uh, what, what's what's the deal here? The Maine Mineral and Gem Museum said in a Facebook post that the fireball was visible in the April 8th daytime sky over Washington County in Maine, and Doppler radar from NASA indicated pieces of the space rock crashed into Earth near Calais, which is close to the border with Canada. The museum is offering a $25,000 oh, okay. reward for the, pers- for the first person who finds and turns over a meteorite fragment weighing at least 2.2 pounds. All right. So, you may about half um, a day. No, no, so they want, I know exactly ball. where that's at. They want the ball. Yeah, where they're saying that is, I've driven near there. I have a photo of me, like, right by that place. Oh, well, the, the hunt you is can, off. You can see off in the distance, you can see a mountain off. Like, a little, a small mountain range off in the distance. Huh. It might it might be the, I don't think it's the Appalachian. It might be a different one. I'm not sure what these, what these uh, color squares are. Maybe um, suspected places of impact? But I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah, that road right there uh, that says Topsfield, there off to the left. Yeah, wait, Topsfield and all that. That is a road I believe we all went on. Huh. And if you look off to the side, there's a... If you look off... Because you can look right at where the border is. It's it's a little bit off of, from the actual road, but... I'm saying there's other pictures here. Oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, there. Yeah, that is the place we've been. Yeah, I've actually. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's very cool. It's a very cool spot to stop at. Wow. It's very scenic, despite being Beautiful. mostly flat. Yep. Alice, perfect. Yeah, buddy. Perfect article for you. Oh, in article. Oh, and now she's oh, back to. German. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Autobots transform and roll out, Heger Digger Burger. Wow! Hey, can you hear me now? Yeah. Am I okay now? All right. So we have the speed drinking German finish the pre the Capri Sun Pouch in record time. Yep. And before we move on, this reminded me of this meme that I collected not too long ago. (laughs) When she finishes the whole Capri Sun in one suck. <laughs> Damn. But, sounds about right. So this guy probably <laughs> had to do it in like, like a second or so, or less than a second. So let's Actually, see this no. little clip here. It says Can here, uh, a speed drinking German man broke an unusual Guinness World Record when he managed to drink an entire Capri Sun drink pouch in 10.41 seconds. Andre Ortloff, who holds numerous Guinness World Records for the speed eating and speed drinking, took on the record in the city of Augsburg and successfully broke it with a, to- with a time of 10.41 seconds. 
All right. Well, Alice, I know oh, that you can no. defeat that like half the time, no problem. So you know. Oh yeah. no, no, that's what I was about to say. Like I've actually like done a suck of Capri Sun, like the fruit punch one, and I did it in like less than five seconds. I was like. <laughs> It was like a big slurp, and I was like, done! You just gotta squeeze it. You just gotta take the bo the whole thing, just boom, and crush it. Yep. Well, you know, and make sure no it's one like else can take a load thing. better than a woman, right? I mean, I mean, uh, you know, uh, women, women can suck things. I mean, women are good at certain things <laughs> of sucking. <laughs> God, I'm just digging myself a hole out here. Right? <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> You are a female, so you're you're legally allowed to say that, you know? Like, yeah. Nationally born one, too. Oh, wait. Did you see I my just made a leave of Franklin now. Someone's going to get triggered. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not as, sorry. As Alice was saying that, I, I did the... Uh, I did the... <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I did, the, I did the Jim Carrey face. Funny yeah. he just went into my freaking work. Oh. Punch it in and the face. Whatever, have fun. Ah, uh, he'll, he'll find his way out eventually. I don't care. Yep. I've never been stung by a bee because I never give bees reason to hate me, so. I got stung by a bee once because I was a little kid and a bee and a bush was making noises, so I investigated and I figured out. I, I fucked around and found out. And it really hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since then, I avoid bees like the plague because I don't want to do that again. It wasn't fun. Anyway, we had more from UPI right here. Oh god, get the fuck okay. out of here, B. Oh no, he's gone. Oh, 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 oh I'm gonna shut. Don't worry, take no. Remember, Turn remember Uncle Dajin's oh. lessons. Yeah. Karate chop it in the face. <laughs> yeah. uh, California couple Hi, wake up to find a bear in their garage. They're. That reminds what? me of that scene in uh, Family Guy. There's a bear in my oatmeal! Like, how do you not know? <laughs> like, this oatmeal tastes it's funny. Scene in, uh, it's open season. <laughs> It's like with Boog that hangs out in the garage all the time. Well, you no, remember that actually that reminds season? me. I just saw a video of a grizzly bear uh, trying to attack the uh, the den of a black bear. Oh, wow. And the black bear mother, she had two cubs. She went running to save her life and did not protect her uh, kin. But this is not unheard of either. Yo, remember that also, lion that like, got attacked by hippos on the rock? The hmm? You remember that lion that got attacked by hippos on the rock? Yeah. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. Don't mess with hippos. They're walking tanks. Yeah. Dude, I mean, so no, are rhinos. No. Rhinos are just blind, horned versions of the of the hippo. Rhinos are just morbidly obese unicorns. So if you're really, don't if you're really, screw, don't screw with walruses either. Like they're like the like they're like the fucking oh, like lions. Well, you, you, like no, walruses are ridiculous too, but nobody talks about that. I have that. an idea. Why don't we just they're treat like the hippo of the sea? I have an idea. Why don't we just respect animals like we respect people? You don't want to fuck with other people, you know? You don't want to get your face no. blasted off or anything like that. No. Anyway, I don't fuck with other things unless they fuck with me. Anyway, it says here a California couple awoke at two in the morning to the sound of their home security camera alerting them to to the to an intruder, a black bear. Uh, Nicole and Larry Collum of Arnold uh, said their security camera's alarm was triggered at their uh, Arnold home at two a.m. and they were shocked when they looked and to see uh, when they when they looked to see what had prompted the alert. There was a bear coming into the garage, said Larry Collum. Uh, the couple said the bear was cautiously wandering in through the garage door, which had been accidentally left open overnight. Well, there you go. You know, cl cl button your and stuff there up. There it goes. Oh, but yeah. Barely awake and barely. Uh, barely awake and barely, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a bear Who's in, in their there, garage. Like... That's terrifying. When was this? Like, today? Uh, yeah, yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, was, I was awake when that happened. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, uh, well, I was like half. Yeah, you day. were. It'd be five o'clock in the morning for you. Yeah, yeah. I was up for. I, I was. I only. I woke up for like ten minutes. Back to sleep. Here's something that'll well, make anyways, everyone laugh. Guys, I have to get off. My my phone is like yelling at me about my battery usage. So okay. I'm gonna pop yeah, off. Fair enough. But I will be back later. All and, right. And, uh, you guys be cool, stay in school, don't do drugs. But before I leave, New York City appoints first ever rat czar. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Only New York. Yeah. Only New York. 
Well, actually, it can, well, happen, it can happen in San Francisco, too, at this point. So. Well, and, and Chicago and Minneapolis. So, and uh, you know. Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, uh, Washington, oh, D.C. And Spider-Man could show up in any of those cities, yeah. along with Venom. <laughs> well, be cool. Stay in school, guys. Don't do drugs. All right. See you, Allie. Anyway, it goes on here. It says, New York City has named its first ever rat czar to tackle the Big Apple's growing rat population, which has become a major quality of life and health issue. I wonder why. New York hmm. City Mayor Eric Adams appointed former school teacher Kathleen Corady uh, on Wednesday as the, first, as the city's first director of rodent, immig- uh, my, rodent mit- mitigation, or rat czar. Wow. So... I mean, you know, you attract the clientele that you want, and New York is, you know, the, the, the shithole cesspool that it actually really is, so there you go. I yeah. honestly, for a second there, I thought that was Deion Sanders, <laughs> that dude, the bald guy. I thought that was Deion Sanders for a second. Oh, God. Kind of looks like him. Huh. Anyway, uh, we have, uh, from NPR, here's like another, you know, source for the, uh, for the meteorite thing that we covered earlier. So, you know, for reading on uh, from Fiber. another source, there you go. Uh, we, now, here we go. <laughs> huh. Schwarzenegger did something good for once? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Repaired a utility trench. Not Semi-pod. a pothole. Yeah. No, essentially, he, hmm. he filled in what he thought was a pothole, but it was a utility trench. So he cost taxpayers a lot more time and money, uh, I believe. Let's read this. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to do a good deed and then goofed. Yeah. He's trying to make up for his whole uh, his whole freedoms thing, but yeah, well, yeah, it didn't go well. There's no Nobody way to make up if your father is an SS member. So. Yeah. Anyway, the yeah. giant pothole that Arnold Schwarzenegger said he recently filled on a street in his Los Angeles neighborhood was actually a trench that had been dug for utility work, according to the city. Southern California Gas Company had covered the trench with temporary asphalt that was to be replaced with a permanent surface, the Los Angeles Department of Public Works said in a statement. After months of heavy rains uh, that have turned roads into tire-popping Swiss cheese for many commuters, Schwarzenegger struck a chord when he released a video of himself uh, and a crew filling a depression on a street with packaged, uh, packaged asphalt patch. Uh, a passing motorist uh, paused to thank the actor who also filled another smaller hole. Uh, SoCal Gas said in a statement that an upgrade of a pipeline system was com- uh, there was completed on January 26, but rain delayed permanent pavement or pav- uh, yeah permanent paving, which is usually usually done in about 30 days. The utility crews returned to the site on Wednesday, a day after Schwarzenegger posted his video and leveled off the patch he completed to make it stronger. Okay, so he did do a good thing, but still, oh, like... So it was a, okay, so it was a good deed. Okay. okay. I thought he, like... I thought he just did a big whoopsie, so... I thought he goofed. I was like, yeah, uh-oh. I did, too. Well, you know how like, these celebrities are, mistakes. you know? Anyway... Uh, yeah, more about this 500-day isolation thing we spoke about earlier, you know, living underground. Um, hmm. And then, uh, last but not least, here we go. Uh, go for it. Up close and pecu- peculiar. <laughs> Goofed it already. <laughs> um, up close and peculiar with artifacts of Abraham Lincoln. Yep. As we all know, if uh, anybody here has seen the history show earlier today that we did, uh, or knows about history, this is the anniversary of uh, when uh, John Wilkes Booth shot Abraham Lincoln in the back of the head, uh, Clinton style, um, and Abraham Lincoln uh, died a day later. (laughs) Uh, Window. (laughs) Just another window. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it says here, uh, we are in the Ripley's uh, warehouse today with a few artifacts from good old Honest Dave, starting with John Wilkes Booth's Derringer gun that was left behind in the theater after killing President Lincoln or shooting him. Uh, it is said that it fell out of his pocket after he was escaping the theater, but in fact, most historians do not believe this is the actual gun that Lincoln was killed with. Um, when Booth was found hiding in a farmhouse in Virginia after the assassination, a second matching gun was found in his pocket. This was a gun that was believed to be the murder weapon. This ended up being confirmed 106 years after the assassination in 1971, after the inside of the, both guns' barrels were tested, and it was found that the gun found in Booth's pocket matched the bullet fragments found in Lincoln's head. 
Ah, hmm. well, that's interesting. So yeah, and of course, for further reading, please refer to the underbar of the description below. I'm gonna watch this after the show. You know, rare artifacts, Abraham Lincoln. So, and there's of course a log house there. So, all right. Anyway, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar of the description for any links you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of different, odd, and otherwise unusual news, we stream every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time, which is 3 uh, p.m. Uh, Mountain, 4 p.m. Central, and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. For all of you and all of us, I am Xander. And I am Jebediah Abraham. <laughs> A.K.A. <laughs> Father Pom. A.K.A. And... Doom was discovered. A.K.A. Ramaser. <laughs> oh, the, the aliases we develop in also, this server, the, I swear. The... I have another one now. Uh, the Oath of War. The Oath of War and Big Fists. That is right. Forgot about yeah. those other two. And anyway, until totally you catch awesome. us... Um, oh, yeah, we also had... Uh, who is Alice? A.K.A. Stapes. A.K.A. Danny Cakes. A.K.A. Ali Kablawi. A.K.A. Warqueef. A.K.A. You know, so so many other names. Like... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, until you catch us uh, on uh, next Tuesday, or if you're interested in some history, we have a history show every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time. And we have a Anything Goes, you know, talk show, The Kick Peanut, every Sunday at 2 p.m., 10 and 2 just for you. Anyway, until then, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! <laughs>